It is Monday, June 18th, and this is your 28storms.com tropical weather update. Today's outlook from the Hurricane Center is placing a lot of emphasis on a subtropical low to the north of Bermuda. They give this feature a 50% chance of classification as a subtropical or tropical cyclone, but as you can see, it's continuing to move away from any land masses, so that is not going to be the focus of today's video. We have much more interest in what is occurring in the Central and Western Caribbean, as this has the best potential to impact land. Much more on that in just a moment, but we also have this disturbed area of weather in the Eastern Pacific. The latest outlook from the Hurricane Center is also giving this feature a 60% chance of development. And this one is a little bit more interesting because it is in close proximity to Mexico. And this area is very prone to mudslides in the event that there's a lot of heavy rainfall. So we're also going to closely take a look at this later on in the video. Anyone that has been watching our videos over the past several days can tell you that there's been a tropical wave we've been closely watching as it progresses through the eastern and central Caribbean. Today it's now interacting with this mid to upper level trough and as a result we're seeing a lot more convection beginning to sprout up across the entire western Caribbean Sea. You can see this even better on the enhanced infrared. In fact the heavy rainfall spreads northeast all the way through Haiti and the Dominican Republic. So I'm sure that there are at least some concerns about flooding in that area, even though it's not going to be a significant event, at least for Haitian standards. And as we turn to the water vapor, there's still a lot of westerly vertical wind shear thanks to the presence of this mid to upper level trough, and it also has an associated upper level low swirling about in the southeast gulf. However, it should be noted that this upper level low is forecast to continue drifting a little bit more toward the west and north, and over time, an upper level ridge is going to develop near the Yucatan Channel and Yucatan Peninsula, providing any system that moves into this area with slightly more favorable upper level winds, and that is why we are continuing to monitor this feature as it moves toward the west. The latest charts from the University of Wisconsin still shows the shear very well. We've got the streamlines in excess of 50 to 60 knots just to the south of Cuba. You can make out where the upper level low is just toward the north. And so just to the south of there, we do have the subtropical jet that is shearing apart any system that tries to get going currently in the Western Caribbean. But even now, you can already start to see some upper level ridging beginning to take shape across Honduras and Nicaragua. And the vertical wind shear values in that area are below 10 knots. The best low level vorticity is also located just to the east of the Honduras coastline and all of the available model guidance is suggesting that this vorticity max will start to move a little bit more toward the northwest and in a few days it will be in the southeast Gulf of Mexico and that is when we will be watching that system closely for any signs of tropical cyclone development. Now this map is the zero hour forecast from the ECMWF model at 500 millibars and it correctly initializes the east coast trough and this is the same trough that is generating the wind shear across the Florida Keys and Cuba. But over 24 and 48 hours, notice that this trough that was once over the West Atlantic is now lifting off toward the northeast, and it's being replaced by a lot of mid-level ridging over the entire eastern United States. As we discussed last week, whenever you have a lot of eastern United States ridging, usually the Gulf of Mexico and Western Caribbean becomes more favorable, and that becomes an area to watch. So beginning at 48 hours, that is when the pattern is forecast to become more conducive. And in 72 hours, the same can still be said. Now, 96 hours, it starts to get a little tough to forecast, because as you can see, the models are showing a second trough beginning to move into the Great Lakes and eastern United States and this could induce another round of wind shear across the Florida Peninsula and surrounding areas. But if any system can sneak toward the west into the central or western Gulf of Mexico, conditions may still be a little bit favorable as another ridge develops over the central plains. And as we go into day six, anything that is still located in the central Gulf of Mexico will have the tendency to want to move more toward the west or northwest underneath that very intense ridge that the model is currently projecting. So what is the ECMWF model showing closer to the surface? Well, right off the bat, at zero hours, it's a little bit stronger with the vorticity max and area of low pressure centered off the Honduran coastline. And we confirmed the placement and intensity of this vorticity max as we saw on the University of Wisconsin chart. And then fast forwarding into 24 and 48 hours, this vorticity max 
could move as far north as western Cuba. And as we talked about yesterday, with the low moving a little bit more toward the north in the short term, the rainfall chances should be going up across central and southern Florida as some of that moisture still gets evicted toward the north and northeast into the West Atlantic by that trough. And then going into 72 and 96 hours, this is the brief period where conditions are forecast to become a little bit more favorable as that first trough lifts out and it becomes replaced by ridging over the eastern United States. So down toward the south, the wind shear values decrease and therefore the surface area of low pressure becomes better organized with the pressure falling to 1,006 millibars. So around day four, this is when we could easily be dealing with an invest that the Hurricane Center is closely going to be following and they will probably be mentioning this area no later than four days out in their tropical weather outlook. And then by day five and day six, this could be the result of that second trough, but the broad area of low pressure becomes drawn out once again from southwest to northeast. But despite that, as we go into day seven and day eight, we're still at least left with a broad area of low pressure that's down to 1,008 millibars as it spreads on into Mexico and Texas thereafter. Now yesterday we took a look at the Canadian CMC model forecast and if you recall it was taking the area of low pressure much more toward the north as it gets drawn northward by the mid-latitude system over the east coast and in fact by days five and six it was showing a tropical storm beginning to get its act together before impacting the outer banks. We said that the model was probably being a little bit too extreme with this more northerly solution and it's already beginning to correct itself. This is the run from this morning, and instead of taking the area up the east coast, it's actually just moving it into the Florida panhandle, which at this point still does not appear to be overly realistic with that other area of ridging beginning to build in by this time, but it should start to move this system back into the west gulf in future model guidance. But as you can see, it is starting to show Gulf of Mexico development once again at the very least. Next up is the latest update from the GFS model, and similar to the CMC and European, the latest run from the GFS is taking the storm or disturbance into the southeast Gulf of Mexico. So this is a real trend that has been occurring over the last one to two days. Instead of taking the main energy of this tropical wave into the Bay of Campeche, it has shifted more so into the southeast Gulf of Mexico. And that is why we're aggressive with the latest rainfall forecast for central and southern Florida. But thereafter, we still think that the system will turn more toward the west underneath the new ridge that develops between four and six days out. So eventually this storm should still move its way into northern Mexico or Texas, but all interest in the Gulf of Mexico should still at least keep a very close watch on this area as we are fairly certain that there will be a lot of disturbed energy in the Gulf of Mexico throughout the next six to seven days. And finally, as promised, we are going to take a quick look at the Eastern Pacific Low Pressure Area. It is becoming steadily better organized on the visible satellite animation and on the enhanced infrared convection is trying to organize closer to the center of circulation. And on the latest water vapor, we do notice a pocket of favorable upper level ridging, although it is centered a little bit to the northwest of the disturbance. And something that we need to closely monitor is whether or not this trough diving out of Mexico will move too far toward the southwest. If that happens, then it will squash any chances of development. For now, however, that upper level ridge is still just close enough to promote added organization, and that is why the Hurricane Center is going with their 60% chance of development into a cyclone over the next two days. Conditions will probably never become conducive enough for the system to develop into a hurricane, but a tropical depression or tropical storm is one thing that we cannot rule out, and the main concern over the next several days will be the risk of heavy rainfall near and along the coastline, as we can see based on the latest European ECMWF model forecast, this tropical system is going to linger very close to shore through at least 72 hours, and that is because the steering currents are not forecast to really push the system in any particular direction until finally perhaps by day four, where we do start to see a little bit more of a northerly track. So if the Hurricane Center decides to classify that system north of Bermuda today, we could easily be dealing with tropical storm Chris within the next day or so but that is not the focus. We are still more concerned about the West Caribbean because anything that moves into the Gulf does have the chance to impact land, even if it is going to be a relatively weak tropical cyclone, and we will be closely monitoring the area of disturbed weather just off the Mexican coastline and the Eastern Pacific. But that is all for now. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We're currently on Twitter and Facebook, so you can follow all of our updates throughout the day and evening hours. 
And of course, you can find all of our hurricane videos at the Hurricane Tracker app available on the iPhone.